All right, hey, what's up, YouTube? So this is the next project here. We're gonna try out this citrus strip paint and varnish stripper. Uh, I've got this chair here that I picked up off of Craigslist that I wanna do a, uh, you know, kind of like an update on. Uh, I basically have to take it apart. Uh, I think this is like an old sewing chair, maybe from like the 70s or something like that. Um, it's a pretty neat, it's a pretty neat piece. Um, just needs to be tightened up. It's a little bit rattly, uh, but overall, I think it's going to turn out really cool. And uh, just wanted to shoot it and post it online and see what you guys think. So I got my uh, Black and Decker drill here, and one thing I like to do when I'm doing parts, some people have those little metal dishes, and you know it keeps all your screws and stuff together. But it's always a good idea to have your um, all your parts if you have multiple parts and stuff, and keep them in one place. And I uh, usually like to just put them in a plastic bag. So let's get to it. Okay, so I was gonna mark all this stuff, but I think it's pretty much just these two side pieces and these, and these actually have bolt holes in them. So that's the back. And I guess the other thing too is that some of these legs have a little bit of, um, you know, damage to the ends. So I'll probably put the, the best looking legs to the front. Uh, so we'll figure all that stuff out after. Okay, so the good thing about this is that this chair can actually be broken down because normally everything's kind of glued, stuck together. Um, so this one should be easier to deal with, which is interesting. I wonder what that's for. Oh, I see. So it has these gaps. Oh, I see. This must be extra. Yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. It's got these little tongue and groove um, pieces here. And I'm going to assume that that is for... That is for a little extra stability for the back. So it looks like I can't really put the legs anywhere else. They're gonna have to go where they were before, which makes it a little bit easier. All right, so really the only tricky part about this chair is this back part right here. These little wood plugs here that have to come out. And uh, pretty much from what I've done in my research on is these, you kind of have to destroy these to get these out. Um, sometimes you can pull them out um, or wiggle them out, whatever, but the easiest way is just to drill a screw in it and then just pull it straight out. Sometimes there's glue in here and things like that so you have to chip it out but we're gonna try to see if we can just extract them with a screw. Alright so normally I'd probably go find like a you know a smaller screw but since we're trying to make this as easy as possible you have these screws right here and uh, I think that they would be just fine. You may need to drill a little pilot hole in here but I'm just gonna try to see if I can screw it in. Okay, that doesn't look like it wants to come out, so um, probably not the best idea to use this on the screw. That's going to be a finished screw, so I'll go ahead and take this off. Um, looks like I already put a little crack in there, which is normally what you do is you just drill a pilot hole and then you're supposed to take a chisel and just kind of pop the stuff out of here. I don't really have a chisel, so I'm going to figure something out and we'll get this out of here.
All right, so we moved into the shop here because that other stuff wasn't working out. So I'm gonna try these two bits and I'm gonna use my Dremel to see if we can't get this stuff done quicker. So we'll go ahead and try this first and see what happens. All right, now that we got that out, I don't know if you guys can see in there, but there's a little screw. And then we'll use that to take off the back. So now we have to do this side. Maybe we should take this off. <laughs> One thing to be careful of is just try not to you know get too much damage that's going on in there I plan on putting something some other plug in here and we'll you know smooth this out but um, you know you definitely want to try not to damage this area here as much as possible even though we'll set this aside always make sure that you put this back in your parts bag hmm. okay so I think it's just gonna have to be a combination method here um, instead of doing the screw this time I'm gonna go ahead and just drill into this thing. So you can see here I already got a, uh, I did a little test with the spray um, and it seems to be working pretty well. There's not a, there's not a thick layer of um, uh, you know varnish, I think this is varnish, I'm not quite sure. Um, it looks like they might have just painted on maybe a couple layers, it's a little bit thicker here. You can see that it's not like put on that well. Um, but uh, the, the wood itself is actually in good shape, like you could probably almost take this, sand it down and have the wood come through itself. but. Um, with this particular piece, we're going to um, just uh, paint it. Um, that might change. I don't know, because usually I kind of, you know, I come up with an idea, a concept of what I want to do, and then as you know, we work, we kind of go, mm, well, I wonder that if we should do that or if we should go in that direction. Um, I've already. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's not a big deal because that'll be up against the chair, so that's uh, that's not a problem. You might just round that over. Um, on all the sides so it all matches um, but now since we've got this separated out we'll go ahead and, and uh, we'll remove the varnish on here and then we can get to sanding so one tip I would probably recommend is before you just rip this thing open is kind of look is what I'm gonna do is kind of look at what they've done here because um, it seems like I don't know if they cut this to a certain size and shape to make it work the way that it does so when we pull this apart, we'll be real careful with it to see because it looks like uh, it's just tacked down here, and this this fold this this part flips up. Um, but there's a very interesting fold right here where this kind of comes together. This goes in, and this comes over one, and then this is folded and comes over another time. 
So that to me is kind of interesting. I'm not quite sure how they did that, but we'll build, we'll be real careful to, uh, to mimic that when we put the other stuff on. Now the, the fabric that I have isn't quite as thick as this, so it might be a little bit easier to deal with, but just a suggestion is to make sure you pay attention to um, the style of folds and stuff when you're dealing with upholstery because it's pretty critical with what they've done here because this is actually pretty cool. So there might be a seam here on this edge right here. I can't quite tell, but we'll, we'll get into that further when we, when we start to do the upholstery part of this project. But for now, um, let's get into uh, removing the stain so we can get to the sanding part. All right, so like I said before, be sure to put your parts back in your parts bag. And now that we've got everything together here, we'll go ahead and we're gonna try out this citrus stripper Protect hands with chemical resistant gloves. I don't know if these are going to work, but we're going to use them because that's all that I have. Uh, eyes, chemical splash pools, be observant. Okay, it says allow can to warm to room temperature. All right, so my battery died on the camera and I didn't feel like dealing with it. I've got these pretty much finished um, you can see that the majority of the stuff came off and uh, I would actually recommend it to use this because some of the stuff that was on there was it wasn't thick but I could see how if I tried to sand it down with that stuff on there I might have like some uneven spots and after using um, this citrus stuff right here it uh, it really gives you a good opportunity to get a nice smooth sanding. You probably won't have to sand that much because um, with that finish on there, it probably would, uh, you know, take a lot longer to uh, to sand where I think this is pretty much going to be an easy sand. I've got these last four pieces left and I'm just doing the insides right now. I've got these done. So once I get done with this, then we can get to sanding. So it's a couple of days later. I actually did a couple of test colors here to see what stuff was gonna look like. I've got a few um, kind of blotchy marks on here on some of these pieces, so I'm gonna go back and, and uh, hit it with this citrus stripper really quick. I'm also gonna use it on this as well. Uh, I'm not gonna shoot that part of it um, because I'll just, I'll just get to that because I wanna get to the sanding of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Um, if you want to check out the next stage of this project, um, look for the links or you can click on these videos here and uh, just want to say thanks for watching.